what you're saying is that not only it exists in metaphorical ways that we as human beings appreciate and enjoy, but that it exists in a larger system of of choices and decisions, of economics, of social forces, and so on. Is that a fair summary of where uh, your thinking is on this? Sure. Well, there's there's no authoritative definition of love that anyone can appeal to, and I think that people. Uh, have a sort of intuitive dualism about this. So they, they think we have kind of bodies and souls, and love is the sort of thing that floats around in the soul area, and our bodies are for more boring things like digestion and, and, uh, and so on. But I, I, a lot of research in neuroscience and a lot of theorizing in psychology suggests that even these really important higher-order feelings of love and attachment and attraction that uh, play a big role in our day-to-day relationships uh, certainly are not just detachable from the brain. And the more that we learn about the neurochemistry underlying these sorts of phenomena, the more we're able to sort of draw a connection between what's happening in the brain and what we experience as love embedded in those uh, wider uh, factors that you mentioned, uh, uh, social understandings of love, cultural understandings of love, historical, philosophical, poetic uh, uh, understandings of love. They all interact with each other, but the one thesis you can't maintain is that there's just no relationship between what's going on in the brain and those higher order phenomena, and uh, we're trying to paint a clearer and clearer picture of that relationship through advances in neuroscience.